Nice, get it for them. Stand here. Pull that line in. Pull on your lures in, fellas. Right, want you to hang on to that. Can I have the, um, right there? Hooks off the ground, rods up the front. Okay, get yourself in One thing about marlin fishing, it's hours and hours and hours of boredom and moments and moments and moments of madness. It all happens pretty quick. Northland has more boats per head of population than anywhere in New Zealand. Uh, we have uh, we do a lot of fishing from harbour fishing, deep blue nose harpooker fishing, big game fishing, spear fishing. There wouldn't be a street in Northland without a boat parked in it somewhere. The advent of small boat game fishing has really only taken off since the 80s. I can remember very clearly the first guy that got a marlin in the Bay of Island Swordfish Club in a runabout. It was uh, big news at the time. Now there's more marlin and game fish caught in outboard powered boats than all the launches. It's just phenomenal. You know, game fishing's got to be safe and you need reliability of your machinery. You can't be going out 10, 20, 30 kilometres in search of these game fish and worry about your machinery. So one of the primary things is you've got to have a good boat, you've got to have good gear, good engine, safety. Okay, so we're going out to one of the better places on the Northland coast. It's a wonderful day of weather. Um, it's called the Garden Patch. So we're going to steam out to the Garden Patch and just before we get there, I'm going to try and catch a live skipjack tuna, um, just to have in the tuna tube on the boat, just in case while we're fishing, you never know what comes along. So I like to have a live bait in the tube already because it's a very effective way of converting a sighting or a bit of interest out of fish to a catch. I use the skippy lure more as an indication when we start where the skippies are, the predators are. You'll see the lures I'm going to put in the water. I generally like, and it's a personal preference thing, and it comes from experience. I've fished with some of the country's best. Um, I've deckhanded a, a lot with uh, Bruce Martin on the predator and Bruce Smith on the striker, and I've learned a lot from those guys. Basically, uh, you put whatever lures out you like. I like two big ones in nice and close to the back of the boat. Um, only four or five metres maximum out the back. Two big booty lures that make lots of splashing. And I put two um, medium sized lures out on the outriggers. The big ones are basically there for a blue marlin. If there's a blue marlin around, they sometimes come really close to the back of the boat and those lures making all, all the splashing and that, they might get some attention. Shotgun because we have it right, right out the back, and it tends to when it goes off, goes off like a shotgun with a bang. We tend to always just have it a little bit higher, a so it clears the other lures, and it's right, right out the back. Some guys read in books that you've got to troll at eight knots. The modern runabout can't troll at eight knots because it's just too fast. It's trying to plane, so we we position our lures at a at a revs that the boat's doing okay. If you, most boats, if you're doing about 1,900, 2,000 revs. You're towing at about six and a half, seven knots, which is plenty. A lot of guys read books and say you've got to be doing eight knots. Well, you simply don't have to be. We're going to have the light side down, the stripe side up, simulating a fish. And the hook is like the rudder. And the shape of that head there, that's going to pull the lure up to the water to make it look, hunt for a bit of air and make a bit of a, a, bit of a smoke trail. So that's how we're going to try and tow that lure there. So the outrigger is there to try and fool the fish. Basically when the, um, the whole principle, so they tell us, and we don't really know this, but the whole principle of a boat moving through the water is to simulate a school of fish on the surface. The predatory fish is under the, uh, the school of fish and it sees the white water of the boat and the outrigger merely pulls the lure out into the clear water that uh, goes from the, the wake of the boat. So you have your wake of the boat and the outrigger has two lures that are going through clear water into white water into clear water and the predatory fish if it comes under and sees the so-called school of fish then there's a lure going past it boom. If we raise a fish we will just clear the rods that are, haven't been hit get them up the front of the boat get the lures off them get the lures off the floor we leave the rod that's screaming just leave it alone leave it alone do nothing with it the more line we've got out the more belly in the line, the more weight on the fish's mouth, the more chance it's going to stay hooked. And of course, if your reel's halfway down, you've got to let the drag back because, you know, the weight just gets too much on it. You could break the line. 
But in the next, say if we've got a strike right now, the lure going off, the rod going off, you leave it alone. We're small boat fishing, so when you're small boat, anything on a trailer, we generally don't have a chair. We have a harness. The harness is a, is a lap harness that basically sits on the top of your thighs and it, and it goes around your back and it gives you support. You couldn't hold a game reel uh, with, a, with a marlin and you wouldn't be able to fight it. So you get yourself a, a, a harness, a gaff, a tag pole, a couple of fishing rods, some lures, you're fishing. Basically all the gear you need set up in a boat, it's probably $10,000, a maximum of $20,000. The way we do it basically the uh, the harness supports you so much and you play that we get the other gear cleared away we get all the hooks off the floor of the boat very important safety you leave a hook on the floor of the boat someone's going to get it in their foot so we take the lures off we fire the rods up the front of the boat or put them up in the rocket launcher and we just start settling the fish down that jumps around a little bit and darts around here and darts around there the main thing is to do everything in a, in, in a slow motion, get all the stuff out and get ready, get the fish settled down. Once you've got all your rods away, got all your lures off the floor, you can then say, right, where are we going to take the fish? I generally take the fish on the starboard side of the boat, if I can. If I can, that's the, the driver's side. I like to run the fish down, so if I'm driving the boat, I can see the line just at sort of 90 degrees to me, and whatever the fish is doing, you're in, you're in control. You have your angler facing the fish, and uh, he, they wind in a bit of line as we get it back. Well, the driver's job, he, he's in charge, you know. He's, uh, he can make the life real, real easy for the angler, or he can make the life real, real hard. He can do nothing, and suddenly the, uh, the angler's really pulling the boat to the fish. Or the driver can position the boat where the angler is getting line back at a measured rate. Generally speaking, most striped marlin, are, you know, they've done their stuff, they've jumped around, they don't kick around too much at the back of the boat, although you just don't know and you, you want to have good gloves on, the two people that are involved, the guy uh, tracing the fish has got to have really good gloves on and the guy gaffing the fish or grabbing the bill has got to, got to have good gloves on. The internet is an amazing thing, Facebook's an amazing thing nowadays, you see who catches the fish, nobody who's asked nicely will go quiet. We all like, we've got passion for our sport. We love telling people how we do it. It's not like in some sports there's secrets. All the guys that catch all the fish love telling people about it. I'm a member of the Bar Island Swordfish Club. When I turned up there, I didn't have a clue. And you start having a beer and talking to people. It is a very social thing. And with the VHF radio, you listen. But with the internet nowadays, it's all on Facebook on what lures, what depth, what water temperature. The modern media is just an amazing thing for fishing. It tells you everything. So we're out today with the 300 horsepower Yamaha on the 2750 Stabycraft Centre Cab. Great combination. We're nearly back at shore now and I just looked at the fuel usage for the day. We've used just over 100 litres of fuel. Hardly saw another boat during the day, so we're out 20, 25 kilometres offshore. You want reliability and safety. Yamaha's done the job for us today.